Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this hour, the latest on an 11-year-old who was accidentally shot at a north side apartment. And residents up and down the East Coast are cleaning up after a powerful nor'easter brought blizzard conditions to many areas. This is going to be interesting weather week around here as we focus on our Monday to begin. Lots of clouds. And I had a few raindrops on the windshield driving into work this morning. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday. It is the last day of January. That Ooh. would be the 31st. <laughs> and Sarah Coast is in for Steph. Hi. Hi. Happy to be here. I, 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 I was telling Mike yesterday, I'm not a fan of January. It's not like my least favorite month. I'm just happy it's over, almost. Well, we're going to flip the page just for Sarah Costa. It's a whole, <laughs> whole new month tomorrow. Oh, and thank you. And why don't you. you like January? I don't know. It's just like, okay. who says January? Oh, my favorite month is January. I have never heard anybody say that. Exactly. I think it's kind of that post-holiday kind of blah. Kind of blah. And the weather has been blah. Yeah, and the weekend was absolutely spectacular. <laughs> yeah, besides, yeah, Saturday right. and Sunday afternoon. And now, good news is we are getting some rain. Bad news is, as is always the case, feast or famine. So <laughs> we are going to have a little too much rain or a lot too much rain off to the east, especially. And right now, and Mark was talking about, he's got some showers around the airport. You can see 410 is damp over there. And we do have a lot more rain, especially in portions of the hill country right now. Most of this, as you can see, this particular batch is kind of sliding up to the northeast. More is starting to fill in off to the east a little bit more. A couple of uh, decent downpours in and around uh, Bandera County, up around Blanco. And then here, around town. We've got just a few of them, but notice how more and more are kind of popping up. So just expect the roads to be wet this morning. So allow yourself a little bit of extra time. And then most of this is going to continue to sort of uh, blossom, if you will. And we do have the potential for some heavy rain off to the east later on today. As a matter of fact, a flood watch is in effect up until nine o'clock tonight. Could see a good uh, maybe two, three, four inches of rain and some locally heavier amounts on top of that off to the east. Not as much to the west here in town. Uh, folks may see uh, an inch of rain or even more than that. So that's some good news, obviously, since we haven't had a whole bunch of rain around here in, oh gosh, about three months. But then again, we may get way too much of it. So that's what we're going to have to be on the lookout for. It is much, much milder this morning. Everybody's in the mid 50s right now. And the allergens, mountain cedar is moderate and mold is on the light side. Grab a raincoat, uh, an umbrella today, a couple of showers around this morning, and then a few showers and thunderstorms again. The heaviest is going to be to the east in a high temperature of 65. We get kind of a break in the action, more sunshine up into the 70s tomorrow, 70s Wednesday. Then the bottom drops out, a big, strong cold front's moving on through here. The question is, are we going to see any mixed precipitation with that? Jury's still kind of out. We'll get, go through all the details coming up in just a couple of moments. Sarah, Mark. Thank you, Mike. This morning, a clear alert has been issued by the Texas Alert Network. The Austin Police Department looking for Andrew Bauman. Law enforcement officials believe his disappearance poses a credible threat to his health and safety. He's about 32 years old, 6'4", weighs about 255, was last seen wearing a maroon t-shirt, blue jeans, and gray sneakers. He's last seen yesterday afternoon in Cedar Park near Austin in a silver 07 Honda Accord. License plate is NKX7240. It is a Texas license plate. If you have any information, please contact the Austin Police Department. A local 11-year-old girl was shot and is in critical condition at last check. San Antonio police say at this time they believe it was an accident. It happened just northwest of downtown at the Kalen West apartment complex yesterday morning. So just take a listen to some ring video just moments after the gunshot. According to Police Chief William McManus, the 11-year-old victim and an 8-year-old boy found the gun stashed near the laundry room at the complex and then started playing with it. The 11-year-old was accidentally shot in the upper shoulder area and rushed to a local hospital. On the way over here, I thought that this, some, you know, they had been victim of a drive-by or whatever, but uh, it turns out that uh, they were playing with a gun that somebody must have stashed uh, out in the courtyard somewhere. Police tell us that the kids are not related at this time. They don't know who was handling the gun when it went off. Now to another winter storm set to impact millions of Americans this week. It comes after the historic blizzard that slammed the East Coast this weekend, delivering a one-two punch of snow and ice with a heavy dose of coastal flooding. ABC's Mona Kozer Abdi has the latest. This morning, another winter storm is taking shape, threatening to bring more snow and ice from Denver to Chicago later this week. 
It comes as millions of people dig out from this weekend's historic blizzard. In Boston, an even tighter squeeze on the city's narrow streets, now crowded with huge mounds of snow-covered cars. How's your back feeling? I mean, geez, I'm only 18. I feel like an 80-year-old man. It's crazy. Now, the iconic parking space savers move in. These Boston residents can save shoveled out parking spots until Wednesday morning using everyday household items. It's just a bucket with a brick. We got some Tommy Bahama chairs we're gonna throw down. Parts of Massachusetts getting 30 inches of snow from the winter storm. More than a foot of snow fell in parts of New York, where at least four deaths are now blamed on the storm. Three of them were people shoveling snow on Long Island. Farther south, parts of Florida saw the coldest temperatures in more than a decade, 19 degrees in Tallahassee. Vero Beach tied its record low at 30 degrees set in 1978. The Arctic blast causing iguanas to drop from trees, temporarily stunned from the cold, leaving them frozen in place. They're up in the trees on the branches sleeping, and then because they get so cold, they lose that ability to hang on, and then they do fall out of trees a lot. Let us be thankful for these moments in life. Back in New England, the blizzard was no match for one couple's love in Rhode Island, holding their wedding outside during the height of the blizzard. I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> Monica Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. North Korea confirms it test launched an intermediate range ballistic missile capable of reaching U.S. territory of Guam in its most significant launch in almost five years. Sunday's launch could be a prelude to bigger provocations by North Korea, such as a nuclear and long-range missile test that pose a direct threat to the U.S. mainland. White House officials said North Korea's escalating provocations have become increasingly concerning. The Biden administration plans to respond to the latest missile test in the coming days with an unspecified move meant to demonstrate the U.S. commitment to its allies' security. Well, this morning, Roland Caballero, who was accused of shooting three Houston police officers, is now facing additional federal charges. The 31-year-old is accused of using a machine gun that wounded the officers in a shootout on Thursday. Caballero will now face multiple federal weapons charges in addition to three counts of attempted capital murder of a police officer. A search of the convicted felon's home produced assault weapons, shotguns, and five handguns all illegal for him to own. Caballero is also charged with aggravated robbery for a carjacking related to a chase with Houston police. The three Houston officers had non-life-threatening injuries. President Joe Biden says he is carefully making his decision on who he will nominate to replace retiring Supreme Court Justice Stephen Breyer. He made a campaign promise to nominate a black woman to the nation's highest court, which he said is long overdue. In a recent ABC News poll, three out of four Americans think the president should consider all possible nominees rather than only black women. The chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee says he hopes Biden's nominee will garner bipartisan support. Right now it's 438, about 57 degrees. And we now know who is going to the Super Bowl this year. Plus, the San Antonio Spurs can't hold on to a 12-point lead last night. We have the highlights. From outstanding football again this mm -hmm. weekend. All right, traffic authority right now. The roads are wet in a few spots, dry in others, including uh, that last one. There's 410 on Harry Wurzbach, where it looks like we do have a little bit of moisture out there. And the screen was frozen. Yeah, I could smell the rain in the air mm -hmm. this morning. Like it hadn't started raining but before I left, but you can smell it. And Mike says we might be getting some throughout the day. He'll explain when we come back. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. NFC Championship, California Showdown. Niners traveling south to take on the Rams. First quarter, Rams looking to score, but Matthew Stafford's pass to Cooper Cup in the end zone, picked off by Jimmy Ward. Second quarter, Rams go 97 yards, 18 plays, cap off the drive. Stafford finding Cup for the 16-yard touchdown, 7-0 Rams. Niners respond. Pass from Jimmy Garoppolo to Debo Samuel. He takes off 44 yards to the house. We're tied at 7. Late in the game, Rams take the lead back 20-17 to with 146 left on the clock. Niners get the ball. Garoppolo under pressure. Aaron Donald all over Jimmy G as he throws to avoid the sack. Trayvon Howard gets the interception, and that's the ball game. Rams win 2017, headed back to the Super Bowl. Meanwhile, Bengals at Chiefs for the AFC title. It was a textbook start, textbook start rather for KC. They take over six minutes off the clock, going 84 yards, capped by this 10-yard touchdown pass to Mahomes to Tyreek Hill. Chiefs up 7-0, but it would be 7-3. Chiefs after one, late in the fourth. Bengals down 
by three. Bengals by three, rather. 30 seconds left. Third and goal. Mahomes tries to get away, but sack. Ball comes loose. Casey recover. And then no problem for Harrison Butker. He makes the 44-yard field goal tied at 24 and force overtime. Third down. Chiefs and OT. Mahomes fires downfield, but it's another interception. Bengals march downfield 42 yards. Evan McPherson nails the 31 yarders send the Bengals to the Super Bowl since he was down 18 points. Bengals win 27 24 in overtime. What a game. So that means it's going to be the LA Rams versus the Cincinnati Bengals in the Super Bowl coming up Sunday, February 13th, 530 p.m. SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. This will be the first Super Bowl that has not featured the top three seeds of either conference. Bengals Rams are both four seeds. Judson alum and Bengals cornerback Trey Flowers playing his first Super Bowl in his fourth season in the NFL. Congratulations to you and best of luck. Our Spurs were shorthanded last night, missing DeJounte Murray, Jakob Pertl, and Derek White due to various injuries and rest. San Antonio takes on the best in the West, the Suns on the road. So Trey Jones gets the start, makes the most of it early, driving right to the basket for the lay-in. 9-7 San Antonio. Spurs took a 91-79 lead into the final quarter, but the Suns erased that advantage in less than three and a half minutes. They used a 14-point run to overcome a 12-point deficit to win their 10th straight game, beating the Spurs 115-110. NBA leading Suns became the first team in the league with 40 wins against only nine losses. Doug McDermott led San Antonio with 24. Coach Pop not happy about some of the calls late in the game, but was proud of their performance on the road. I'm thrilled with how we played. You know, we just did a little film to watch some of the mistakes down the stretch that, that a young team is going to make. Uh, in an effort to just get smarter and understand what goes on in those situations. We knew that we just had to keep that energy, you know, as far as just aggressiveness and physicality. Um, I'm just very happy that we had players like Trey Jones who stepped up, uh, you know, Doug was lights out, you know, players did what, did what they needed to do. We just um, didn't come up with the win. Up next, Spurs return home tomorrow night to take on the Golden State Warriors. Tip off 730 at the AT&T Center. Then Thursday, the Heat are in town, followed by the Rockets on Friday. And that's a look at morning sports. Oh, so much. Yes. So much jump back there. I'm excited. Me too. 450, uh, 445, rather, 57 degrees. Well, up next, how China is dealing with more COVID-19 outbreaks just days before the start of the Winter Olympics. China has locked down several cities due to COVID-19 outbreaks just days before the start of the Winter Olympics. ABC's Mona Kozer Abdi has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, with the Olympics just five days away, anxiety about COVID is on the rise. This is the first thing we see entering Beijing right when we get off the aircraft. Just dozens of people in hazmat suits. When we landed, the process was rigorous and efficient. Something to be witnessed. Here, our luggage all laid out for us, all, what, like about 30 bags or so waiting for us. That's a test in the middle, checking visas, QR codes, immigration, customs. We're here, just about an hour. Lots of lines, multiple document checks. Just got another QR code. We're on the bus on the way to the hotel now, getting our first glimpse of Beijing out the bus windows. The highway has special lanes for Olympic vehicles. And coming up at 7 a.m., the heightened security restrictions on the ground, all to keep the game safe. With your GMA First Look, I'm Maggie Ruley, ABC News, Beijing. Take a look outside with our traffic authority. And we saw it earlier. Some of those roads are, just have a little bit a dash of rain on them. And Mike, um, is this going to progress throughout the yeah. morning? Yeah, yeah, this morning and then especially this afternoon, uh, we'll still keep, see a few showers around this morning. We're starting to see a few more kind of come on in here. But, you know, a lot of folks have been hearing about and we've been focusing on what's going to happen Thursday. We got to talk about today because there is the potential for some very heavy rain, especially off to the east today. Gorgeous picture from a couple of days ago. Sunset over Lake Travis just doesn't get any prettier than that. And yeah, the weekend was spectacular, obviously. So there's the Namp roads over there at uh, 410 by the airport. A lot of rain covering the hill country. This is fantastic. Fantastic news that we do have rain, obviously, but we just don't want too much all at once. 
So despite the fact that individually all of this is kind of moving off to the northeast, we'll see more setting up off to the east. First of all, a um, good portion of the hill country. And now even just in the past, what, uh, 10, 15 minutes since the top of the show, we're starting to see a lot more of this fill in with the light rain in and around the area. So again, assume all the roads are wet or when you finally head out the front door, they are going to be wet and it's going to stay that way throughout a good chunk of the day. So here's the computer model. And again, it's got more of the rain kind of off and on throughout the rest of the morning. Then as we go into the late morning hours, notice how it starts to really set up and develop out here to the east. And this is where east of uh, pretty much 281 is where the heaviest is going to be. This particular computer model does have a few of those heavier showers in around Bear County and leaning toward the hill country, which is a possibility. But again, the vast majority will be well out there to the east, and that's going to be on into the evening hours. Other computer models don't have quite as much kind of lagging on the uh, the back side of it, if you will. Rainfall potential could see a good three to five inches in some of our extreme eastern counties, even about, uh, say, an inch or so in and around town or even a couple of inches. So we'll have to watch out for that. If you get those heavy downpours, obviously could be some flooding in the low lying areas, the usual spots that tend to flood over. And then the flood watch is in effect up until nine o'clock. And this does include San Marcos uh, Gonzalez over there toward Victoria. And that uh, yeah, the potential is obviously there when you get about three to five inches. OK, jumping ahead to the future Wednesday, we do have some more rain that's going to be developing very warm tomorrow. Clouds going to keep temperatures mid 60s today, 70s tomorrow on Wednesday. Then the front starts to work its way through here. That's going to be early on Thursday. This particular computer model, and this is where the jury is still out as to exactly when the really cold stuff gets on in here. So this is about this time Thursday morning. This model still has it all in the form of rain, and then the colder air continues to work its way in here and moves out quickly. There's another computer model that has the colder air coming in a little bit sooner. So this is something we still need to keep watching for at least the, the next couple of days as far as when exactly the cold air is coming on in here. One thing for sure, it is going to get really really cold, probably coldest we've seen this season. Today, 62 showers, a couple of thunderstorms today at noon, potentially some heavy rain, especially east of 281, 65 for a high temperature today. And again, that flood watch is in effect up until nine o'clock for our extreme eastern counties. Then tomorrow we get a break in the action, maybe some fog to start off, by the way, 72 and we'll be up in the 70s on Wednesday. The front comes through and there is the chance for some light mix on Thursday primarily up around Austin and northern parts of the hill country. There's the confidence very high, but how soon the cooler air gets on in here? Is it going to be some mix in the morning or will it be later on in the day? Temperatures will drop down throughout the day. One thing for sure, it is going to be frigid cold. Mid 20s are low temperatures Friday, Saturday. We will be below freezing for Oh gosh, a good 18 or 12 to 18 hours here in town longer in the hill country. So that's something to keep in mind. And uh, yeah, another really cold start on Saturday morning. A lot going on this week. Yep. One extreme to the other. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you, Mike. Watch the heavy rain today. All right. The today. Evening. Okay. Yeah. I like the idea that you were kind of saying, Focus hey, keep an eye on the ball today. Yep. 453, about 57 degrees. Well, up next, Spider-Man continues his reign at the box office. Plus, another music artist gets removed from Spotify. An iconic Bruce Springsteen song debuts on an ABC series. Plus, Spider-Man continues to dominate the box office. The latest on what's happening in Hollywood. Here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. It's my family's, and no one is taking it away from us. If you got the first episode of ABC's The Promised Land last week, you heard a familiar tune. Bruce Springsteen's Born in the USA. Springsteen, notoriously picky about licensing his music, but Promised Land creator Matt Lopez tells me he was told it wouldn't hurt to write the boss a letter, pleading his case to use the song. So I wrote him a letter, um, and while I've never spoken to Bruce, what got back to me was he really responded to the letter. And the idea that these characters, these immigrants, they're not born in the USA, but in a way, and especially when you see the show, they're reborn in the USA. The Promised Land returns for episode two tonight on ABC. Score another one for Spider-Man. Spider-Man No Way Home tops the box office for a fifth weekend. To be fair, though, it had no new competition. There were no new films released wide in North America. Joni Mitchell and Neil Young both on the same side now. She's joining the legendary rocker and asking for all of her music to be removed from Spotify. 
They're protesting podcasts on the streaming service that they say spread dangerous and deadly misinformation about COVID-19 and vaccines. Spotify says it routinely scrubs episodes with inaccurate info. And no scandal here, just a birthday. Actress, director, and producer Kerry Washington is 45 today. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athens in ABC News, Los Angeles. It's 457 and 57 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, the U.S. ramping up diplomatic and financial pressure on Russia over Ukraine. We'll have the latest on a U.N. Security Council meeting scheduled for later today. Plus, Tesla is now selling a microphone just for in-car karaoke sessions. That's coming up in Tech Bite. Yeah, nothing could go wrong there, could it? Right? <laughs> Outside with Transguide right now. If you're just now tuning in, we have some showers in the area, and that is starting to be reflected on some of these Transguide cameras, some wet pavement and uh, concrete out there. 410 at Harry Wurzbach. Steven's here. We'll talk to him coming up at the top of the hour. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making news this morning, a man stabbed by a woman on the city's south side overnight. Why police say it happened coming up. A high stakes UN Security Council meeting to confront Russia about the aggression towards Ukraine. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details just ahead. Concern today is going to be the rain. 57 degrees at 501 this morning. Mike will Give us our forecast in just a bit. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, January 31st, and believe it or not, our umbrellas could get wet today. Yeah, it definitely smelled like rain. You said you had some like actual rain on your drive in. And Mike says there is more of that in store for most of us today. Yeah, we're looking at uh, some of the, the heaviest rain that we've seen around here since way back in October. We've had little bits, but you know, we've been so far behind for the past uh, couple of months around here, about two, three months. But yeah, the, the potential is there for too much rain and you know the old thing around here feast or famine 57 degrees right now so much much warmer much more humidity than what we had uh, over the weekend and a couple of showers are being reported out there at the airport temperatures are going to be making it up into about the mid 60s later on today so not a huge span in temperatures because of the cloud cover because of the rain because of the extra humidity around here and the aquifer yesterday went up two tenths of a foot it should be getting a nice nice big recharge with some of the rain because there's already a bunch of it out there in the uh, recharge zone and mountain cedars on the moderate side mold is low of course the update account is going to be coming out later on this morning all right here's what it looks like on radar right now and again a lot of rain out there in parts of the hill country even a few uh, moderate to heavy downpour some of those light and orange spots right there and as you can see that's moving in toward moving at a fairly good clip right there in eastern kerr county just about to work its way across 10 and then in town we even have a couple of spots over there around 410 35 um, you know a couple of decent downpours here and there but this is continuing to sort of fill in, if you will, in coverage. And so if you haven't left the door yet. Just expect all the roads to be on the wet side so you can allow yourself a little extra time. There is a flood watch that's in effect up until nine o'clock for our extreme eastern counties. This does include uh, San Marcos and then over toward the east. About, uh, say, three to five inches of rain is going to be possible in some of our eastern counties here in town inch, inch and a half. Obviously, there could be some uh, heavier amounts on top of that. So showers and thunderstorms today, heavy rain off to the east. Then we'll see a bit of a break tomorrow. Warmer tomorrow, warmer still on Wednesday. Rain moves in on Wednesday and then that front late actually in the overnight hours, early Thursday morning. There is the chance for some winter mix Thursday morning, but it's still not definitive on exactly who's going to see it when the really, really cold stuff moves on in here. Definitely northern portions of the uh, hill country up around Austin there, but still kind of iffy as to whether we see it in the morning here in town, but there will be a little bit then throughout the day and temperatures will drop down throughout the day Thursday, and then we're going to see some frigid cold mornings Friday and Saturday and probably coldest temperatures so far this season and a nice long span of below freezing temperatures as well. Get all the details in just a couple of minutes. And it's traffic authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. Wet roads, not a good mix, right? Yeah, definitely not. Not on a day like a Monday, Mike. Uh, we are taking a look at 1604 at Marbach. Uh, we can see some of the rain coming down there from this Transguide camera view. We're also spotting a few folks out there this early in the morning. As Mike said, you know, you got to be careful out there when the conditions start to change like this. Right now, we are seeing again a few folks there this morning. Not a whole lot, but nonetheless, take it easy out there, especially driving through 1604 because we already have a 
driver experiencing an issue uh, right there at 1604 southbound near Shanefield Road. As you can see, our map doesn't pick up any congestion just yet, but you saw that trans guide camera, so there's our people out and about this early in the morning. So remember to take it slow out on the roads. That's always the best way to go. Let's take a jump out of the map and show you how we're shaping up at this hour at 505. No delays just yet. We're not seeing a whole lot of activity out there, but we are seeing some rain and some of those uh, wet roads out there. So take it easy. And if your travels are driving, taking you into San Antonio, that is what well, we got to, uh, your inbound times for you right now coming in from I 10 eastbound Bernie to downtown 26 minutes, 27 minutes. If you're traveling on 281 coming in from Bolverde and 26 coming in on 35 from New Braunfels on those southbound lanes. So no delays just yet, but we know as the morning does go on, things can change right now. 1604 at Marbach quiet start to this morning, but no problems just yet. We'll continue to watch these roads closely. Mark Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a fight over drugs may have led to a cutting overnight. Happened just before midnight in the 300 block of East Lambert near Proban, just south of downtown. SAPD believes a 59-year-old man and a 58-year-old woman were fighting over drugs, and the woman cut the man's arm with a kitchen knife. Police believe they are heavy drug users because of syringes found in the house. SAPD says a woman was arrested for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The man was treated on scene by EMS. A 40 year old inmate at the Bear County Jail is dead. The sheriff's office said he was assaulted by two other inmates Sunday morning. Officials say the man who was killed was reported feeling uncomfortable in his cell. That's when the sheriff's office says 50 year old Ernesto Tavera and 28 year old Brandon Lerma ran into an officer's station repeatedly and stabbed the man. Tavetta and Lerma were both detained as deputies attempted to perform life-saving measures on the man. The unnamed victim was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The victim was serving time for aggravated robbery in an out-of-county warrant for assault. The U.N. Security Council has scheduled a high-stakes meeting today over the Russian military aggression towards Ukraine. The U.S. and NATO ally allies are putting immense pressure on Russia to scale down its massive troops buildup along the Ukrainian border. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, as Ukrainian troops pick up arms training in the field amid rising Russian aggression, U.S. officials are also dialing up the pressure on Moscow on multiple fronts, promising to push the Kremlin for answers about its plans in Ukraine at a U.N. Security Council meeting today. You don't amass 100,000 troops uh, if you don't uh, have intentions to use them. We're, we're not uh, going to be distracted by their propaganda. The meeting comes as a group of lawmakers on Capitol Hill inch closer to a bipartisan deal on a bill they are calling the mother of all sanctions that would devastate Russia's economy if it invades Ukraine. I would describe it as that we are on the one yard line uh, and hopefully uh, we will be able to conclude successfully. For weeks, Russia has bolstered and positioned more than 100,000 troops along its border with Ukraine. Russia has denied any threat but has demanded the U.S. guarantee NATO will scale back forces in Eastern Europe and prevent Ukraine from joining the alliance. The U.S. has rejected the demands. Britain now considering a major NATO deployment to the region while supplying short-range anti-tank missiles and training Ukrainian troops. In this new video, you can see Russian military vehicles being moved to Belarus, north of Ukraine. But now Russia says it's sending some of its troops back to their bases, though thousands will remain at the border. We just cannot afford to panic. Mm -hmm. So we're preparing for any options. Everyone knows who aggressor is. It's Russia. The U.S. hoping diplomacy will prevail over war. We're prepared to address our concerns, uh, Ukrainian concerns and Russian concerns at the diplomatic table, but it cannot be done on the battlefield. And as concerns grow over Russia's gas supplies to Europe, President Biden is expected to meet with the leader of Qatar today. We're told the discussion with the oil-rich nation will be about global energy supplies. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. Metro Health says COVID-19 hospitalizations are slowly decreasing. In their last report, there are 1,245 patients in the hospital, 282 in the ICU, and 127 on ventilators. Community Labs is opening a new COVID-19 public testing site this week, and you can expect a quicker turnaround time for results. It's going to be at Divine Providence Catholic Church that's on 5667 Old Pearsall Road. It's open today through Friday, starting at 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Appointments are not required. 
509 about 57 degrees. Still ahead why Spotify is now adding a content advisory to all podcast episodes featuring COVID-19. Up next, important info you need to know if you plan to vote in the March primaries. Earlier we saw with some of Steven's shots that it was raining out there and you can definitely see that some of the roads out there are wet. Mike says that we can expect more rain throughout the day. He'll explain when we come back. 513, today's the final day to register to vote for the upcoming March primaries. So if you aren't sure whether you're registered or not, you can find out on ksat.com. We have the link where you can check your status. Also on our website, you can find everything you need to know about the primary election, including a look at what's on the ballot. Early voting begins on February 14th and Election Day is March 1st. All right, all, today is also the last day to pay your 2021 property tax bill to avoid a penalty or interest. Bear County Tax Assessor's Office will have extended business hours today at all locations, including curbside drop offs and drive through options. Payments can also be made online at bear.org slash tax or by calling the phone number on your screen. If you're a taxpayer on a payment plan, this deadline does not apply to you. If you have accounts with an active lawsuit from a prior year, they will be assessed an additional 15% fee on the 2021 taxes if they are not paid by today. For more information, call the tax office 210-335-2251. It's 514 and 57 degrees. Still ahead, why Apple will now let developers distribute unlisted apps through the App Store. Plus, Tesla is now selling a microphone for in-car karaoke. What would you like? I think we everything is included. Gonna be falling, Did you and your husband enjoy your stay? Yes. Visit secretsresorts.com slash love unlimited for a special love unlimited package and savings up to 40%. Not only do Centrum Multi Gummies taste great, they help support your immune defenses too. Because a healthy life starts with a healthy immune system. With vitamin C and D and zinc, getting out there has never tasted so good. Try Centrum Multi Gummies. Join Planet Fitness today for zero enrollment. Zero, like a bagel. It's only ten dollars a month. Cancel any time. Enjoy tons of equipment for zero enrollment. Zero enrollment. And ten bucks a month. That makes me so happy. Feel spectacular in 2022 for zero enrollment. Ten dollars a month. Cancel any time. Deal ends February 2nd. In today's Tech Bite, Spotify says it will add content advisories before its podcast about COVID. The move follows protests kicked off by Neil Young over COVID vaccine misinformation on Joe Rogan's podcast. Rogan agreed with the new advisory and says he'll add more experts with differing opinions to his show. Apple is now letting developers distribute apps that are not listed in its app store. So-called unlisted apps are only discoverable through a direct link. To make an app unlisted, developers will need to submit a request to Apple. And Tesla is selling a microphone so you can perform in-car karaoke. The Tesla mic pairs with the vehicle's audio system, and it comes with two microphones if you want to harmonize with the passenger. But there's a catch. Right now, the mic is only available in Tesla sold in China. And those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. I don't know how safe that is. I don't know. And I wonder if there's a point where the car would be like, uh, we're pulling over. So you can safely karaoke until, until you can until you stop singing. Otherwise, <laughs> we're not going anywhere. <laughs> Just depends on the singer. Yeah, um, Stephen. I know you're a big karaoke fan. <laughs> what? No, what? not at all. But I will say this. I will say this. Uh, you can just do that already, right? I mean, if you know the words of the song, you don't need the microphone. No. Right, right. You know the words of the song. Yeah, right, exactly. Beg your pardon. No one who, yeah, if you're, especially if you're traveling alone, it's even better. You can sing as loud as you want. But don't do that today because we want you to be safe on the roadways, especially with some of these conditions outside. Let's take a quick look. 35 North at Loop 410. We are seeing some wet roads out there. Uh, and obviously, as the morning does get going, and we start to see more drivers getting their morning started early with us. So take it easy. 35 at Aldo, not a whole lot, but there are some people out there. 37 at Hackberry. Now, while it is still very quiet this morning, there are some issues to be on the lookout for. The first is right here, 1604 southbound at Shanefield Road. We told you about a stall detected there. That's still being reported, but we're not seeing it cause any issues for drivers that are commuting through that area. But nonetheless, make sure that you're watching out for that driver. Give them plenty of room. We want to take a jump up all the way over here to 35. 
five because there is some road work that was going on earlier this morning. It started actually overnight, uh, but we'll be wrapping up on Friday. That's already February 4th. It starts from nine in the evening to five in the morning. Now, text crews actually are going to be working out there, and that's led to the northbound exit ramp closure to Weedner Road and a single lane closure on the northbound frontage road from Joe Lee Street to North Weedner Road. Now, in the meantime, traffic should use the O'Connor exit ramp and make sure that you're following the detour signs. Let's take a jump out of the map and show you what we're looking at at this hour. Still really calm at 520 AM. We're not seeing again a whole lot of people out there, but that's some good news. Remember to give yourself plenty of time if you have to head out the door in the next few moments. Right now, the roads are calm, but we're going to continue to watch them, especially with those rainy conditions on the way. Thank you, Stephen. Mike, I know a couple of things you want people to be weather aware about yeah. this week, starting today. Today, the, the rain, obviously the, the morning commute this morning, it is wet out there, so just watch it with that. And as you can see, visibility may be dropping a little bit with some of that rain as it starts to pick up. Let's jump ahead real quickly to uh, the the cold weather that's coming on in here. And I know a lot of people are still, you know, even the last time we had a um, little bit of frozen precipitation, everybody's uh, kind of on edge because of last year. That was below freezing for almost five days. This may be about 18 hours. It's still a long time. The temperatures are going to be below freezing. We're going to have some frigid wind, frigid temperatures Friday morning, Saturday morning, but nothing like last time. That was, you know, what, half a foot of snow in some places. We will have some light mix, and even the timing of that is still a little bit iffy as of right now. And wind chill temperatures, they were down in single and negative numbers. It is going to be really cold, but it's not going to be anything like, again, what we had last year. First of all, here is the rain, and there's a lot of it, even a couple of lightning strikes now up there around uh, Rock Springs, and it's definitely starting to fill in and maybe even pick up a little bit. We're seeing a few more of these spots with maybe some moderate showers scattered about the area, and this will continue continue to work its way to the east to northeast. And now this is a little bit if you're watching last half hour, a little bit different computer model, which obviously does have most of the rain. This is kind of in agreement off to the east, but it doesn't keep as much in and around town. And there's where the heaviest rain is off to the east, and that's going to be ending then by late this afternoon. Now there is the potential for about three to five inches in extreme eastern counties. Uh, the dividing line would be about 281 or so with the heaviest rain off to the east east here in town could see an inch to even a couple of inches of rain. That is definitely a possibility. And then also the flood watch is in effect up until nine o'clock. And again, that's for our extreme eastern counties, Gonzales over toward or up towards San Marcos, I should say, and then further on down to the south, not including B County. Now, as far as the computer model for today or for longer range, jumping into the future, beg your pardon, this one is not as aggressive with the cold air. It holds it back a little bit longer. So going into Thursday morning, it still keeps the rain in and around our area, but changes it over further up to the north early on and then some of the colder air continues to filter down in here throughout the rest of the day and we keep the chance for a little bit of that uh, mixed precipitation around but that would then primarily be in the first portion of the day on Thursday then that will come to an end and it's just going to be really cold now back to today showers and a couple of thunderstorms 62 degrees and then a high temperature only up to 65 about normal it's going to be held down because of the rain because of the cloud cover and again some heavy rain off to the east with that flood watch in our extreme eastern counties and then tomorrow we get some of a break in the action and still going to be very mild in the mornings and warm in the afternoons some rain on wednesday front moves through early on thursday and again the timing of exactly when the cold air comes on in here still a little bit iffy as of right now. One thing for sure, temperatures will drop throughout the day, so we'll be below freezing by the afternoon. A little bit of a mix, especially up to the north early on in the day and some in and around town. And then brutally cold, low temperatures, mid-20s on Friday and Saturday mornings. You so. talked about it a little bit yesterday, Mike. Really no need to do the panic thing, the panic buying. And no, all not that. at all. Yeah. Nope. Not yep. at all. So a little bit of, you know, light freeze, but it's just going to be very cold. So, you know, prepare for that with you know, pipes, things like that, since we are going to have an extended period uh, below freezing. I have extra paper towels and toilet paper if you all need it. Okay. Oh, just thank thank me, you. Just let our, me know. Our supplier, Mark Austin. No problem. Yeah, it's, it's out in the parking <laughs> lot right now. a casserole just because. A casserole? Yeah, why not? Is that what I offered? <laughs> Right now, 524, about 58 degrees. All right, up next in your morning spotlight, the Encanto soundtrack has its best week yet, and Halo, the series, gets a full trailer and a premiere date. 
Today in entertainment news, the soundtrack to a popular movie and a series based on video games. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. The Encanto soundtrack is still riding high. It tops the Billboard 200 album chart for a third non-consecutive week with its best sales week so far. It's the first soundtrack to spend at least three weeks at number one since A Star is Born a few years ago. It's Master Chief in the show based on the iconic video games about a war between humanity and the alien menace, The Covenant. Halo debuts March 24th. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. It's now 528, about 57 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, U.S. officials say Russia will face pressure over Ukraine at today's United Nations Security Council. We'll take a look ahead. Are you ready for some Little Debbie ice cream? We'll tell you when some of your favorite snack cakes will be available by the pint. Making headlines this morning, all eyes on Ukraine and Russia as the U.N. Security Council gets set to meet today. The story is rainy day and you see it there on that camera lens 57 degrees at 531 this morning. Mike will let us know how much rain we can anticipate throughout the day. Good morning to you. It's Monday, last day of the month, the 31st. I'm excited. I'm not a January fan. We're moving right into February <laughs> with lots to talk about in the weather this week. Here's Mike with more so, on that. January ends on the wet side. February is going to start off on the, uh, the cold side. First of all, we talk about the rain out there and the roads are definitely wet. So allow yourself plenty of extra time. Grab a raincoat because you're going to need it throughout a good chunk of the day. 57 degrees right now and that bottom number has really come up as expected. So a lot of humidity out there feeding some of these showers. Not much of a breeze to speak of as of right now. And boy, a lot of rain in the hill country. As you can see, this is all moving off to the northeast. And we're starting to see it fill in a lot more even around town. And like I said, uh, been seeing more of these uh, kind of moderate to even heavier spots that are popping up around here. A few more down around uh, Atascosa County as well. So we'll continue to see some rain around throughout again much of the day. The majority of it though is going to be off to the east. That's where the flood watch is in effect up until nine o'clock and the potential is there for anywhere maybe three to five inches of rain in some of our extreme eastern counties. The dividing line for the heavier rain is going to be east of 281 here in town. Maybe inch a um, couple of inches of rain is going to be possible and you know with those heavy downpours you got to watch it with the low water crossings at times but again the heaviest will be off to the east mountain cedar is moderate mold light updated counts going to be coming out in a uh, couple of hours. We are going to continue to see scattered showers and thunderstorms, most of it off to the east, and that's where the potential heavy rain is, 65 for a high temperature, and then that will start to come to an end later on this evening. We get a break in the action tomorrow, and then more rain chances Wednesday, then that brutally cold cold front moves on in here. We're looking at some really cold temperatures. Big question if and when we see any mixed precipitation with some freezing rain and or sleet. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Wet roads, any problems yet? Well, we are spotting stalls right now, Mike. Uh, just talking to our friends over at Transguide right now. You see the camera moving there. That's because there is a stall that's been picked up on the Transguide cameras right now. And we do see that there are some first responders that are out there, but you do want to be make yourself aware that the roads are still wet this morning and you're going to want to drive carefully, especially when we encounter situations where we see first responders that may be working to either clear a crash or perhaps assist a driver who's having trouble out there. But this does look like a, some sort of big rig that also looks like it could be stranded there. Again, this is off I-10 near 35. We'll pinpoint that in just a bit, but we want to bring your attention to the map because although we are seeing some of those wet roads, we're not seeing so many problems out there, but keep in mind we are spotting a few. Those stalls are popping up. This one being there for quite a while there off Loop 1604 South and at Shane Field Road, not causing problems, but it's been there for about half an hour or so, so we'll continue to keep our eye on that throughout the morning as the data start picking up. But if you are traveling into San Antonio, we are spotting maybe a slight slowdown coming in from Seguin in those westbound lines with 30 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area. Nothing too bad yet, but make sure you give yourself some time this morning. 22 minutes if you're traveling 87 northbound from Lavernia. And right now, if you're traveling in from Flotusville, we got 29 minutes for you. So that's a little bit of a delay, but nothing too drastic right now. We're still in the green, thankfully, in these different communities. But the problems are going to be something like this, where we see first responders and some of those wet roads out there. Looks like a heavy first responder presence, so we'll continue to watch this closely, and we'll see how that impacts your morning drive. Mark Sarah.
Thank you, Stephen. San Antonio police say picking the wrong dance partners has proved to be a painful experience for two men. Both were grazed by bullets allegedly fired in a jealous rage. It happened just before closing outside a West Side bar. Katrina Weber is here live in studio with the details. Now, Katrina, have police made any arrests? No, not yet. They're still looking for those two suspects, two men who it seems didn't like the victim's moves on the dance floor. Police did find the victim shortly before two this morning, still in the parking lot in the 1,000 block of Frio City Road. Uh, police say that the one man who's in his 30s had been grazed on his arm by gunfire. The other one in his 20s was grazed on the head and did go to a hospital as a precaution. According to police, those two men had been dancing with a couple of women inside El Patio Bar. Two other men, apparently with ties to those women, didn't like was, what was going on. A fight broke out in the parking lot and police say that's when one of the jealous men pulled out a gun and fired. And again, both suspects were gone by the time police arrived. They did not release a description of them. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Katrina. This morning, expectations are high, but will Russia deliver? Today, the U.N. Security Council is set to meet to talk about the situation at the Ukrainian border. And CNN, as Britt Connery reports, U.S. officials say they're looking for the council to consider what's at stake. You don't amass 100,000 troops uh, if you don't uh, have intentions to use them. Whether Russian President Vladimir Putin decides to further invade Ukraine remains to be seen. Today, another push for diplomacy with the meeting of the United Nations Security Council. Russia insists it has no intention of attacking, but has shown no sign of de-escalation. One Russian expert has implied the show of force is just that, a show. The first goal is uh, to attract the attention of the West. Uh, to uh, Russians' concerns about uh, the security system in Europe. And uh, Putin stated it quite bluntly that uh, the West uh, doesn't want to listen to us, so we need to do something dramatic to get the Western attention. Russia sees the growing support for Ukraine from NATO in terms of weaponry, training and personnel as a threat to its own security. Ukraine has warned Russia is trying to destabilize the country before any invasion. In truth, tension between the two nations goes back nearly a decade, when Russia annexed Crimea in 2014, and Russian separatists took control of the Donbass region. The history is complicated, but the U.S. ambassador to the U.N. says its expectations for the future of this conflict are straightforward. We've made clear that we're prepared to address our concerns, uh, Ukrainian concerns and Russian concerns at the diplomatic table, but it cannot be done on the battlefield. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Testimony will resume for a second week as the federal trial continues for three former Minneapolis police officers charged with violating George Floyd's civil rights. Prosecutors are trying to prove that Thomas Lane, J. Alexander King, and Tutau deprived Floyd of his rights when they failed to give him medical aid as Officer Derek Chauvin knelt on Floyd's neck. King and Tao were also charged with failing to intervene. Former head of training at Minneapolis Police is expected to be back on the stand today. Katie Blackwell testified last week that three officers did not follow department policy when Floyd was killed. A 41-year-old West Texas Sheriff's deputy has died after a crash this weekend. DPS officials say Loving County Deputy Lauren Redmond was driving to help another deputy with the call around 4.30 p.m. yesterday when she collided with a semi-tractor trailer truck. She was pronounced dead at the scene. Meanwhile, the truck driver was not injured and has not been charged with a crime. In Brazil, at least 18 people have died, including seven children, after heavy rain hit the state of Sao Paulo. Five people are still missing. Nine additional injuries were reported. 500 people have been left homeless. Floods, landslides, or total partial road closures have also been reported throughout that part of the country. Schools across our country and across the San Antonio community are facing so many obstacles while overcoming all of the challenges thrown in the way by COVID. So there are a lot of questions. So to help answer them, the superintendent of schools for Southside ISD joined us this weekend in our leading SA segment. Yes, yeah, Superintendent Ramirez joined us. We talked about a lot, mainly how his school district, Southside ISD, is staying on track despite this latest surge of the Omicron variant of COVID. We talked about testing for teachers, staff members, and students. We talked about all the hands-on activities. That way, it helps keep these students engaged, keep them learning, and here's a little bit of our conversation. Our STEAM program has been a hit with the community. Uh, you know, we've had some fun, uh, relevant activities for our students. 
Uh, just, you know, this coming week, uh, we have, uh, we partnered up with UTSA. We're doing an excavation right behind uh, high school and uh, our La Soya Middle School, uh, studying the Battle of Medina and, uh, and uh, bringing up our students from the elementary all the way to the high school to participate in it. You can find the full conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA every Sunday morning at 8 a.m., so we'll see you guys back here next Sunday. Back to you. Thank you, Max. 540, about 57 degrees. Still ahead, we'll tell you about an important recall for certain Kia vehicle models. And next, crazy winter weather is finally done for now in the Northeast, but another front's coming for the South later this week, including right here in good old San Antonio. Mike says the story for weather today is the rain. You can see it right there on the lens. 541, 57 degrees. How much rain will parts of our viewing area get today? Mike will let us know when we come back. The worst of the nor'easter that blanketed much of the northeast this weekend is gone, but the aftermath remains. SNN's John Lawrence reports forecasters say some areas will have wind gusts as high as 40 miles per hour and bone chilling temperatures. Millions of people from the mid-Atlantic to the northeast are digging out from a major winter storm that brought whiteout conditions, coastal flooding, and hurricane force gusts. We like came outside and the wind was so bad we almost got blown away. And while plow crews were out and about, in some spots, the snow was still too much for drivers. On the long expressway, when you get off the tunnel, you couldn't make it up. Halfway up, a lot of cars just had to turn around. It was a lesson some people had to learn firsthand. I was just dropping my sister off, literally around the corner. I came to look at the water because, I mean, it's all frozen over. So I had to look, and then I got stuck. Boston, Philadelphia, and New York were among the cities that set new snowfall records this weekend. Some states, including Maine, could see up to two feet of snow from this storm. This is so fun. <laughs> this is such a good storm. Being able to get outside in the, in the weather like this, being able to snowshoe, ski, it's one of the things I love most about living in Maine. Oh, no. While some made the most of this wintry blast. Today, it's a big winter day. I'm having fun. For others, it was business as usual. We are open right now, yes. We figured a lot of people couldn't get out of the house, so we made an effort to come out and uh, get the place open so we could serve the community. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Well, the little kid was so excited. Oh, he was also frozen. <laughs> slash cold, yes. <laughs> He was having a good weekend. 545, about 57 degrees. Up next, some of your favorite little Debbie snack cakes. They're transforming into ice cream. We'll tell you when and where you can try some. That's locale, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. In your morning consumer headlines, Kia is recalling more than 410,000 cars in the U.S. because of possible airbag issues. The recall includes a number of Forts, Sedona, and Seoul models. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration says airbag computer covers could possibly damage the electrical circuit. That could result in the airbags not being activated in a crash. Owners can contact Kia's customer service line for more information. You can now eat your favorite snack cake by the pint. Seven of Little Debbie's classics will be getting an ice cream makeover, oatmeal cream pies, cosmic brownies, zebra cakes, even honey buns will be popping up in the freezer starting tomorrow. Hudsonville Ice Cream announced the partnership with the snack food icon after a success of ice cream based on the Christmas tree cakes last November. The pints will be available exclusively at Walmart, but all seven flavors will be available year round overwhelmed with choices there yes you are and for a lot of people the day just got a whole lot better <laughs> that's right especially dealing with the rain out there Stephen. i saw the roads are some of them still pretty slick yeah you know and they're definitely gonna need that treat probably later this morning we have a few problems it's almost like that switch just went off and we're starting to spot issues like this that are popping up on our trans guide cameras and our map not looking good at this hour right now we're just at a little bit after 5 30 this morning we're already spotting a whole mess of problems out on the on the morning uh, morning commute this morning. I 10 at 35. You can see that we have uh, plenty of first responders that are out there this morning. This is because a crash has been picked up in that area. We want to take you to the map and show you where it's pinpointed because we have that listed in the eastbound lanes of I 10 at 35. We're not spotting delays just yet, but we are seeing more of these problems that are popping up. Let's take a jump up over here to 410 westbound at Callahan Road, where we have another crash that's been reported. Unfortunately, these aren't the only incidents that we're spotting right now. We're going to take a jump up over here to 
1604 eastbound at Nacogdoches Road. Another crash has been reported. Now, one of the things that we spotted as the morning has gone on is that more of these trans guide cameras seem to be riddled with rain. So we're seeing some of the wet roads out there, and it's unclear if this rain has played a factor in these crashes. We always want to emphasize that. However, you want to make sure that you are driving carefully through the area because the rain can make the roads sometimes difficult to navigate. And when we have crashes like this, you want to make sure that you're driving very carefully, especially for our first responders who are working to make the roadway safer. Right now, not the only issue we're spotting. I-10 at 35 is one of the problem spots, but again, we're going to continue to watch these roads closely and we'll let you know how the morning does shape up as we start to see more people out there, guys. I'm just so thankful that we're not at or below freezing right now with this moisture moving into the area today, Mike. And yeah, the good point there, but uh, Thursday is going to be a, an issue and still the, the jury's out on when that cold air actually comes in. We'll talk more about that in a second. First of all, these conditions really aren't going to be changing that much this morning. Roads are still going to stay very wet. We've got a lot of rain out there in portions of the hill country. We actually have a couple of lightning strikes out there in northern Edwards County and may be one or two um, claps of thunder here and there, especially later on this afternoon, especially off to the east. Again, the majority of rain is uh, right along I uh, excuse me, along 281 heading up there to the north. And we've still got a lot of light rain covering most of the area. And then a few more of those showers coming in there from the south. So even though there might be a little bit of a break in the showers, just um, just assume it's going to be raining throughout most all of the morning and the roads are going to be on the damp side. So here's computer model and it's got again the majority of the rain sort of refiring off to the east. And this is pretty much in agreement with everything that we're going to be seeing the heaviest rain to the east of 281. This particular model then likes to get things out of here fairly quickly. I think some of the rain is still going to be hanging around town uh, even into mid afternoon. Another computer model keeps it around all day long. But again, the thing to take away from this is we'll have some uh, lesser chances of rain well off to the west or actually maybe even no rain and then the heaviest well off to the east. And again, even a few uh, scattered showers still left over here and then all that will continue to move on out late today. Again, could see a couple, three, four inches, five inches of rain, maybe some heavier pockets on top of that well off east of our area. And then in town, about maybe inch, two inches of rain when it's all said and done. Obviously, you could have a couple little heavier spots on top of that. And there is the flood watch off to the east. Again, well to the east, just our extreme eastern counties are sort of on the fringe of that. So the majority of this is going to be well out of our area. But again, you get a heavy downpour, those usual low water crossings, you need to watch out for that. So today, excuse me, going into the middle part of the week, we will have more showers developing. We get the break in the action tomorrow and then some more uh, rain on Wednesday and then Thursday. Now, this particular computer model is the one that is much slower with the cold air moving on in here. So Thursday morning, it's primarily all in liquid form. Then the colder air starts to work its way on in here and especially up in northern portions of the hill country and <laughs> This really doesn't even bring it down in our area as far as the cold air mixing with the precipitation. So again, it's still, you know, jury is still out, like I said, as far as exactly where and when. Very high confidence as far as up around Austin for the frozen precipitation Thursday morning here in town. It's still a little bit iffy. still that chance, though. 62 degrees here today. Uh, showers, a couple of thunderstorms, heavy rain potential off to the east. 65 for a high temperature. Again, the flood watch in our extreme eastern counties up until 9 o'clock tonight. Then tomorrow, break in the action. 72 degrees, 74 Wednesday, more rain moves on in here. Then we do have the chance for some light mix. It is going to be windy. I mean, one thing is certain. It is going to be cold and it's going to be windy. Some of the coldest air of the season, mid 20s, Friday morning, Saturday morning. But just if and where the wintry mix is again, definitely up to the north. How soon the cold air moves on in here and the rain moves on out. So it's that timing. Are they going to be crossing paths? Okay, thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. I 54 about 57 degrees. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, zero, three, four, fireball zero. Daily four, six, eight, two, three, fireball three. Cash five, 10, 18, 19, 27, 31. Lotto Texas, four, 18, 19, 35, 45, 52. And Powerball, two, 15, 38, 54, 65, Powerball 11, power play four.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, new news in President Biden's Supreme Court nominee search. What we're learning about some of the candidates that the White House is considering, and this is all happening as the president is facing mounting criticism. We're going to have that and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Ahead in the next hour, GMSA, are you trying to lose weight? We'll tell you about the impact plastics may be having on your body. And Transguide looking out their wet roads and quite a few flashing lights. We'll check back in with Stephen coming up. A high stakes UN Security Council meeting to confront Russia about the aggression towards Ukraine. I'm ABC's Faith Abube in Washington. Details just ahead. A woman is in jail this morning after officers say she attacked a man with a knife overnight just south of downtown. We have the details. And shots fired at a West Side bar early this morning. We'll tell you if anyone was hurt and what led up to the shooting. Rain is the story this morning, 57 degrees at 6 a.m. You can see it on the roads there. Mike will let us know how much rain we can expect today in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Monday, January 31st. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. And it is a bit of a wet one out there. You will need the umbrella today, and Mike says some folks could see a whole lot of rainfall. Yeah, it's always the, the feast or famine situation here, mm -hmm. and off to the east is where the heaviest rain is going to be. We do have a uh, flood watch that's in effect for some of our extreme eastern counties, and uh, here in and around town, inch, inch and a half it is definitely possible throughout the day today. So it is wet out there by the airport. We still have plenty of rain. The majority of it has been out in the hill country where it is as of right now, and all this is kind of moving off to the east to northeast. Most of it's on the light side, but then again, we've got some of these, you know, a couple spots right behind that uh, 281 sign right up there, uh, just heading up 281 where we've got a, a heavier downpour and even on the south side, a couple of these moderate showers that are moving on in. And even though maybe there's a little bit of a break in the action here, we'll still continue to see a few more of these showers working their way on through here. So Allow yourself some extra time this morning. Plus, it has already rained and roads aren't going to be drying up anytime soon, so they are going to be on the, the wet side. So there's the flood watch. And again, the western edge of it is our extreme eastern counties. So most of it is going to be further east of our area, but anywhere from maybe uh, three, four, five inches of rain, some heavier pockets well off to the east and decreasing amounts further west you go. Out to the west, you may not actually see any rain today. Mold is moderate. Yesterday's count, uh, excuse me, Mountain Cedars moderate. Mold is on the light side. That updated reading is going to be coming out in about uh, an hour and a half or so. 56 this morning. We're going to stay fairly steady with the cloud cover with the humidity, with the rain out there, and not a huge warm up throughout the day. Nothing like what we had yesterday. We went from just about freezing all the way up into the upper 60s. Nowhere near that today. 62 at noon, more showers and even a couple of thunderstorms. And again, the potential for some heavy rain off to the east later on today with a high temperature of 65. We get a break in the action tomorrow and very warm. Then more rain chances start to work their way on in here on Wednesday. Then that big, big, strong front moves on through. Big question is the cold air and the wet going to cross paths. And when will that happen? Where will that happen? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavasso's got your hands full, huh? It's been a problematic morning as we take a look right now. New view, I-10 at Callahan East. You can see that we have lots of first responders out there. Traffic also slowing down. And if you're still watching this trans guide camera closely, you can also see the roads are a little wet out there. But you have to take it easy this morning. We're spotting a number of issues. And at 6 a.m., that's not a good thing. It's never a good thing. But when we start to see more people out there, this is when those problems Problems really start picking up and traffic starts slowing down and the roads can get really messy really fast. Let's go ahead and take you to the map and show you where that crash has been pinpointed off of I-10 eastbound at Crossroads Boulevard. These eastbound lanes of I-10 look like they're already starting to see that slowdown. So do be prepared or find that alternative route this morning. Not the only problem as they take you down over here. We spot that other crash off I-10 eastbound near 35. Uh, not seeing any delays there just yet, but there still are first responders. I was just checking the trans guide cameras out there. It does look like there's also still a few road flares remaining. So just make sure you take it easy there and another crash off 1604 eastbound and Nacogdoches Road. Not the only problem is unfortunately some of these trans guide cameras don't reach all of the crashes. What we want to do now is get a look on the ground from photojournalist Tim Stewart. Now he's out over there, over there on the southwest side of town near uh, New Laredo Highway. We can see that this does look like a vehicle that's uh, definitely involved in some sort of crash. Very dark out there, but we can also make out some road flares and some flashing lights out in the distance. Not 
sure if anybody was seriously hurt. Of course, we're hoping to get some information on the situation and we'll let you know how that develops as the morning does go on. But it has been a very problematic morning. If you want to we want to bring it back to the map and show you right now we got a pretty active scene and we can see that it's again something that's going to keep us busy throughout the morning. But of course, we're going to let you know how all these crashes are going to impact that morning drive. Just remember to buckle up and be safe. Sarah. Thanks, Stephen. New this morning, two men injured after being shot at at dancing with the wrong woman at a bar overnight. The shooting happened in a parking lot of a bar on Frio City Road near Highway 90. According to police, the suspects got upset when they saw the two men dancing with the women and chased them out of the bar. That's when someone pulled out a gun. One man was grazed on the arm. The other was grazed in the head. The suspects took off after the shooting and at last check, police are still searching for them. The two men who were hurt are expected to be OK. Also this morning, a woman's in jail after police say she attacked a man with a kitchen knife. Happened at a house just south of downtown on East Lambert near Provence. Officers say the 58 year old woman and the 59 year old man were arguing over drugs before she cut him. The woman was arrested and the man was treated at the scene. A Bernie man is home recovering after a long battle with COVID-19 that kept him hospitalized for over 200 days. Brandon Nation was diagnosed with COVID in February of 2021. Though he's in his 40s and has no underlying conditions, COVID sent him to the hospital in serious condition. He spent 137 days on a form of life support for his lungs, ended up getting transported to Gainesville, Florida for a double lung transplant. Finally, after seven months, he was discharged from the hospital. Brandon wasn't able to get vaccinated before he was sick because of age eligibility requirements. He now encourages others to do so and get vaccinated in order for them to avoid having the problems he had. Today is the final day to register to vote for the March primaries. If you aren't sure whether you're registered or not, we can help. We can send you over to ksat.com. We have a link where you can check your voter registration status. Also on our website, you can find everything you need to know about the primaries, including what is on the ballot. Early voting begins February 14th. Election day is March 1st. Today is also the last day to pay your 2021 property tax bill and avoid penalty or interest. The Bear County Tax Assessor's Office will have extended business hours today at all locations, including curbside drop offs and drive through option. Payments can also be made online at bear.org slash tax or by phone by calling that number on your screen. If you're a taxpayer on a payment plan, the deadline does not apply to you, and if you have accounts with an active lawsuit from a prior year, they will be assessed an additional 15% fee on the 2021 taxes if they are not paid by today. For more information, you can call that office number at 210-335-2251. Now to the ongoing tension in Eastern Europe, the UN Security Council has scheduled a high stakes meeting today over the Russian military aggression towards Ukraine. The US and NATO allies are putting immense pressure on Russia to scale back its massive troop buildup along the border with Ukraine. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. A good morning. U.S. officials believe today's U.N. Security Council meeting will give Russia a chance to offer some answers about its plans at the Ukrainian border. But already Russia is slamming the meeting as a PR stunt. This morning, as Ukrainian troops pick up arms training in the field amid rising Russian aggression, U.S. officials are also dialing up the pressure on Moscow on multiple fronts, promising to push the Kremlin for answers about its plans in Ukraine at a U.N. Security Council meeting today. You don't amass 100,000 troops uh, if you don't uh, have intentions to use them. We're, we're not uh, going to be distracted by their propaganda. The meeting comes as a group of lawmakers on Capitol Hill inch closer to a bipartisan deal on a bill they are calling the mother of all sanctions that would devastate Russia's economy if it invades Ukraine. For weeks, Russia has bolstered and positioned more than 100,000 troops along its border with Ukraine. Russia has denied any threat but has demanded the U.S. guarantee NATO will scale back forces in Eastern Europe and prevent Ukraine from joining the alliance. The U.S. has rejected the demands. We just cannot afford to panic, mm -hmm. so we are preparing for any options. Everyone knows who aggressor is. It's Russia. The U.S. hoping diplomacy will prevail over war. We're prepared to address our concerns 
concerns, uh, Ukrainian concerns and Russian concerns at the diplomatic table, but it cannot be done on the battlefield. And as concerns grow over Russia's gas supplies to Europe, President Biden is expected to meet with the leader of Qatar today. We're told the discussion with the oil-rich nation will be about global energy supplies. In Washington, Faith Abube, ABC News. 609, about 57 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, Super Bowl 56 is set. We'll take a look at the two teams and how they got there. Are you a fan of singing in the car? Be honest. We'll show you how Tesla's making that life a little bit easier for you. It's a funny story. All right, 57 degrees at 610 this morning. And yes, those roads are slick out there. Rain is the story this morning. Mark will let us know how much we can expect in our viewing area when we come back. Or Mike. Or, or Mike, yeah, him too. Spotify says it will add content advisories before its podcast about COVID. The move follows protests kicked off by Neil Young over COVID-19 vaccine misinformation on Joe Rogan's podcast. Rogan agreed with the new advisory and says he'll add more experts with differing opinions to a show. We're going to have more on this story ahead in our next half hour. Tesla selling a microphone so you can perform in-car karaoke. The Tesla mic pairs with the vehicle's audio system and it comes with two microphones if you want to harmonize with a passenger. But there's a catch right now. The mic is only available on Tesla's sold in China. Really not the advice you should be doing, especially this morning, Stephen. Lots of incidents out on the road. You want to make sure that you're avoiding any distractions on any ordinary day. But yeah, Sarah's emphasized on a day like this, you want to be extra focused. I-10 at Galahan East, pardon me, we have a crash that, <clears throat> pardon me, has picked up uh, some flashing lights out there. Some plenty, plenty of first responders, traffic moving through that area slowly, but we're seeing people trying to navigate through this situation. And right now, uh, we are also spotting a slowdown in this particular area of town. Let's go ahead and take you to the map because I 10 eastbound at Crossroads Boulevard. You can see that slowdown already starting to happen there for drivers. First responders are very, very busy this morning. This is not the only scene that they are at. We have another crash that where we still see a presence out there of I 10 eastbound at 35. This one has been there for about an hour now, but we've not seen any delays with traffic, but it is still starting to pick up so we could see that change very quickly. The one where we're spotting some delays is right over here off 1604. Right now, TxDOT has this crash listed in the eastbound lanes right at Nacogdoches, but we're spotting that slowdown also taking place in the westbound lanes of 1604. We're going to watch that closely. Let's push out of the map and show you how things have been looking because it has been a very problematic morning for our drivers that are heading out this early. Not sure what the, if the rain has caused any of these crashes, but of course you got to be careful out there, especially when we see conditions change like that. We showed you a crash earlier off of New Laredo Highway as well, so it has definitely been a very busy morning for first responders, but we're watching things closely. Now, if you are traveling into San Antonio, no delays just yet so you can take your time. So that's some good news. Just a slight slowdown coming in from Bolverde on 281 with 28 minutes to downtown San Antonio. So no big delays just yet, but we're watching these situations closely right now. Things have been off to a very troubling start, guys. And we'd like to reemphasize for Mike and for everybody watching right now, he wants us to be extra weather aware this entire week here in South Texas. Yeah, we're going from really one extreme to the other because off to the east, you know, this morning, obviously, we're dealing with wet roads, as Stephen's been talking about, and then uh, potentially some very heavy rain off to the east, probably just on the fringes of our uh, eastern counties, and then the really cold stuff late this week. This morning, 56 degrees, showers, allow yourself plenty of extra time this morning because, you know, it's going to be slow going we already got the, you know, lots of problems out there. 65 later on this afternoon, about a normal high temperature. We're not obviously going to be seeing that, you know, yesterday it was from low 30s up to the upper 60s because of the clear skies and dry air. But now with the clouds and humidity, you don't get those big swings in temperatures, obviously. All right, here's what it looks like out there. Roads are still wet. We still have plenty of rain, majority of it out there in the uh, hill country, well north of uh, a lot of the hill country we go straight up 281 you're going to run into uh, uh, some fairly decent rain over there around canyon lake and off to the east around uh, say new berlin heading in towards seguin we've got kind of broken showers here in town right now we've had a lot more earlier but just assume that most of the roads or all the roads are wet this morning and then even a couple of more of these uh, showers continue to develop down here to the south so we'll continue to see off and on throughout the rest of the morning and again temperatures are really consistent right around mid 50 is about a good 10 degrees above normal computer model through today. Heaviest rain is going to start to develop well off to the east and 
We'll still have some leftover showers here. And again, computer models really aren't completely in agreement with this as far as what's going to be left over. I think most of the rain um, gets on out of San Antonio by, say, mid afternoon. We could still see a few showers around here, even an, an inch of rain or so. But the heaviest will definitely be off to the east. And that could be anywhere from two, four, even five inches, perhaps some localized heavier amounts east of our area. And then it starts getting progressively less here in town. Again, maybe an inch um, off in East Bear County, a little bit more than that. Could have some obviously localized heavier downpours, but it'll be about an inch or so roughly. And then we've got the flood advice, excuse me, flood watch off to the east later on today. One thing interesting, we're going to be seeing humidity come back up by midweek and we get uh, some rain on Wednesday. Then that cold air comes on in here in those bone chilling temperatures that we are looking at. And again, it's once again, the computer models really aren't in agreement as to the timing, how soon the cold air moves on in here and whether the moisture is still left over. So this particular model does have moisture around uh, early on Thursday. Colder air definitely up around Austin, Fredericksburg with uh, frozen precipitation. Then it has some of the colder air trying to work its way on in here. But again, the the timing on when the cold air comes in, when the uh, moisture gets on out of here, that's still somewhat of a wait and see situation. 62 at noon, showers, couple of thunderstorms, heavy downpours off to the east. There is that potential and the potential for flooding well off to the east. 65 for a high temperature today. Breaking the action tomorrow and 72, lots of sunshine in the afternoon. Then showers again on Wednesday. Yeah, we're still going to be watching the exact timing of when the front moves through, when the actual freezing temperatures move on in here, whether it mixes with that uh, rain, definitely wintry mix up to the north, but certain it is going to be cold. 25 Friday morning and then low 20 or mid 20s on Saturday morning. So an extended period of some really cold temperatures. All right, you've probably been hearing about this. Another winter storm. They had one over the weekend. Another one is set to impact millions of Americans this week, and it comes after that literally historic blizzard that slammed the East Coast this weekend. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has more. This morning, another winter storm is taking shape, threatening to bring more snow and ice from Denver to Chicago later this week. It comes as millions of people dig out from this weekend's historic blizzard. In Boston, an even tighter squeeze on the city's narrow streets, now crowded with huge mounds of snow-covered cars. How's your back feeling? I mean, geez, I'm only 18. And I feel like an 80-year-old man. It's crazy. Now, the iconic parking space savers move in. These Boston residents can save shoveled-out parking spots until Wednesday morning using everyday household items. It's just a bucket with a brick. We got some Tommy Bahama chairs we're going to throw down. Parts of Massachusetts getting 30 inches of snow from the winter storm. More than a foot of snow fell in parts of New York, where at least four deaths are now blamed on the storm. Three of them were people shoveling snow on Long Island. Farther south, parts of Florida saw the coldest temperatures in more than a decade, 19 degrees in Tallahassee. Vero Beach tied its record low at 30 degrees set in 1978. The Arctic blast causing iguanas to drop from trees, temporarily stunned from the cold, leaving them frozen in place. They're up in the trees on the branches sleeping, and then because they get so cold, they lose that ability to hang on, and then they do fall out of trees a lot. Let us be thankful for these moments in life. Back in New England, the blizzard was no match for one couple's love in Rhode Island, holding their wedding outside during the height of the blizzard. I now pronounce you husband and wife. <laughs> Monica Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. 621, a very uh, balmy 57 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA. There was an exciting pair of football games over the weekend, and now we know who's going to the Super Bowl. We have a preview after the break. I'm getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20. So am I, because I'm at risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. I'm asking about Prevnar 20, because there's a chance pneumococcal pneumonia could put me in the hospital. If you're 65 or older, you may be at increased risk for pneumococcal pneumonia. Prevnar 20 is approved in adults to help prevent infections from 20 strains of the bacteria that cause pneumococcal pneumonia in just one dose. Even if you've already been vaccinated with another pneumonia vaccine, ask your doctor if Prevnar 20 could help provide additional protection. Don't get Prevnar 20 if you've had a severe allergic reaction to the vaccine or its ingredients. Adults with weakened immune systems may
may have a lower response to the vaccine. The most common side effects were pain and swelling at the injection site, muscle pain, fatigue, headache, and joint pain. I want to be able to keep my plans. That's why I chose to get vaccinated with Prevnar 20. Because just one dose could help protect me from pneumococcal pneumonia. Ask your doctor or pharmacist about getting vaccinated with Prevnar 20 today. Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Championship Sunday's in the books and Super Bowl 56 is now set. We know which teams will be playing in the last game of the season. AFC Championship kicked off at Arrowhead Stadium in KC yesterday. Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs playing host to the Joe Burrow and then Bengals. KC wasting no time in this one, quickly jumping out to an early 21-3 lead. But Burrow and the Bengals come storming back. They led in the fourth by three. Chiefs not done yet. They were able to tie the game with a field goal in the final seconds of regulation. Chiefs win the coin toss in overtime. Mahomes fire downfield gets picked off. Bengals march down the field and nail a 31 yard field goal to punch their ticket at the Super Bowl. Cincinnati wins 27 24 in overtime over the NFC title game in LA. A California showdown between the Niners and Rams first quarter goes scoreless both sides. Things start to heat up in the second though. Rams quarterback Matthew Stafford finds Cooper Cup. The 16 yard touchdown Niners respond Jimmy Garoppolo to Debo Samuel and he takes off. Goes 44 yards to the house late in the game. Rams take a 2017 lead. Niners get the ball back, but Garoppolo throws a pick, and that is the game. Rams win it 2017 over San Fran. They get to play in the Super Bowl on their home field. So it's the Rams taking on the Bengals in Super Bowl 56. That game is coming up Sunday, February 13th, 530 at SoFi Stadium there in Inglewood, California. So this will be the first Super Bowl that does not feature the top three seeds in either conference. Bengals and Rams are both four seeds. Judson alum and Bengals cornerback Trey Flowers is playing in his first Super Bowl in his fourth season in the NFL. Congratulations and best of luck, Trey. Wait, way to represent. Yeah, right? You have a favorite pick? I, I'm pulling for the Bengals. Me too. Yeah, <laughs> just for fun. Yeah, why not? All right, 6, 8, 626 and 57 degrees. Still ahead in the next half hour, Spotify has taken some heat over recently over what others say is COVID misinformation. We'll tell you how the streaming service is responding. And we've got the latest on an overnight shooting at a bar near Highway 90. Katrina Weber, she'll be joining us live with the details. Let's go outside with live cam right now, and we've got a mess on the highways right now, and you can tell why. We have rain in the area. That's made for slow going and some treacherous conditions. We'll talk to Mike and Stephen in just a moment. Good morning. It's Monday, January 31st. Well, thanks for starting your day with us right here on KSAT and GMSA. Let's bring Mike right in right now, get an update. Mike, shower's going to stick around all day today? Pretty much, especially off to the east. Mm -hmm. I think it'll start to taper off here in town. Uh, we may still see, you know, a good inch of rain mm -hmm. uh, here in town and heavier amounts well off to the east. As a matter of fact, flooding is going to be a, a threat off to the east later on today. We've had a lot of rain this morning. Roads are still wet. You can see still kicking up some, uh, some spray, even though the rain may have kind of or the showers have come to an end temporarily 56 dew point 55 ton of humidity out there obviously that's helping helping to feed some of these showers and the majority of the rain has been up to the north a lot of it there right around canyon lake getting some really good rain towards san marcos and then in town again it has sort of uh well, temporarily tapered off. We've got just a couple little spots here and there, but then more is developing even down to the south. So we'll continue to see some of this. Then it's really going to get going, especially off to the east. That's where the flood watch is in effect up until nine o'clock tonight. And our eastern counties are kind of on the, the western edge of this. So the majority of that rain or the majority of the really heavy rain is going to be further off to the east. But again, still here in town, maybe uh, an inch and some localized heavier amounts on top of that. Mountain Cedar, moderate, mold, low updated count today is going to be coming out in about the half hour 45 minutes or so so showers a couple of thunderstorms some heavy rain to the east today then that will begin to taper off tomorrow we get a break in the action and we'll make it up into the low 70s We're going to see some sunshine and still very warm on Wednesday but the rain's going to start to work its way in here then that front moves through late overnight into Thursday. So some winter mix primarily up to the north. There's confidence in that up around, say, Austin uh, Fredericksburg line. But how 
soon how quickly the cold air moves on in here and if it kind of cross paths with the the moisture left over is really dependent on what happens here in town. So that's still kind of iffy as of right now, but definitely it is going to be much, much colder. Temperatures will drop down throughout the day on Thursday. It's going to be windy and then we're going to be seeing frigid cold readings Friday morning and Saturday morning well down into the 20s. More on the forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, wet roads on a yeah. Monday morning, not a combination. Oh, you know, right now, a total of five crashes, Mike, that we're watching right now on our roadways. The latest you uh, saw on that hammer a little bit earlier, I-10 at Callahan East. Right now, this appears to be one of the big ones because we are seeing that traffic is looking like a river right now, not moving very fast, but we have plenty of first responders that have been out there on the scene working to clear this mess up. But morning rush is almost upon us, so we know that this will continue to be a problem as the morning does go on. We're hoping our first responders can get this thing cleared up quickly, but of course, give them room to do that job because you can see from this trans guide camera that the roads are wet and drivers are going to want to take it slow as they navigate through these messy conditions right now. Let's go ahead and bring you right to the map, take you show you where that's at because we see the buildup that's continuing to grow in those eastbound lanes of I-10 again, right at Crossroads Boulevard is where that crash has been reported. We're going to take some jumps over here because the morning is shaping up to a troubling start. I-10 eastbound at 35, still spotting this crash detected there. Plenty of first responders on that scene. We're also seeing a new crash pop up off 410 eastbound at I-35, spotting a slight buildup in those lanes as well. It doesn't stop there. We're still going to go a little bit further over here off 1604 westbound at Lookout Road. We spotted this slowdown earlier, but now Texas has listed a crash in that area. Now we want to emphasize there's no trans guide cameras in this particular part of San Antonio, but we're going to watch this stretch of road closely and let you know how the morning develops. Another crash up there of 1604 eastbound in Nacogdoches. You can see as we jump out of the map that 634, we have a very busy morning. Usually we start to see more of the morning pickup uh, during morning rush hour, but right now not looking great for our roadways. We showed you the inbound times earlier. Nothing too bad just yet. 29 coming in from Bolverde to the downtown San Antonio area and 24 on 87. So take it easy out on the roads this morning. Not a great way to start the work week, but we're going to watch the roads and help you get through it. Guys. What a mess. Thank you very much, Stephen. Well, they may have had all the right moves on the dance floor, but San Antonio police say not everyone liked what those two men were doing at a West Side nightclub. Police say someone shot them apparently out of jealousy. Katrina Weber is live in our newsroom with this story. Katrina, you say this had to do with the dance partners those men picked. That's what police told us, that this uh, it seems that they made a big misstep when it came to picking their dance partners. Those two victims, according to police, chose two women who had ties to the shooters. The trouble started inside El Patio Bar, according to police, ended with violence in the parking lot shortly before 2 this morning. Both of the victims ended up with graze wounds. One man in his 30s was grazed on the arm by a bullet. The other in his 20s was grazed on the head. He had to go to a hospital as a precaution. Police say the two men had been dancing with a couple of women. The suspects apparently didn't like that, and it led to a fight outside in the 1000 block of Frio City Road. Police say one of the jealous men pulled out a gun and fired. And both suspects were gone when police arrived. They searched but did not find them. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Katrina. A clear alert has been issued by the Texas Alert Network. Austin police now looking for Andrew Bauman. He's 32, about 6'4" weighs about 255 pounds. Last seen yesterday in Cedar Park, just northwest of Austin, wearing a maroon t-shirt, blue jeans, and gray sneakers. He was also in a silver 2007 Honda Accord with a Texas license plate NKX7240. Law enforcement officials believe he poses a credible threat to his own health and safety. If you have an information on where he might be, you're asked to call the Austin Police Department at the number on your screen. That's 512-974-7822. A local 11 year old girl was shot and is in critical condition at last check. San Antonio police say at this time they believe it was an accident. It happened just northwest of downtown at the Caneland West apartment complex. Now take a listen to some ring video just moments after the gunshot. So you can hear the panic in everyone's voices as they realize what had just happened. According to Police Chief William McManus, the 11 year old victim and an eight year old boy found the gun stashed near the laundry room at the complex and then started playing with it. The 11 year old was accidentally shot in the upper shoulder area. On the way over here, I thought that this, some, you know, they had been victim of a drive by or whatever, but uh, it turns out that uh, they were playing with a gun that somebody must have stashed uh, out in the courtyard somewhere. 
Police say the kids are not related at this time. They don't know who was handling the gun when it went off. A 40 year old inmate at the Bear County Jail is dead. That's half sheriff's office says she was assaulted by two other inmates Sunday morning. Officials say the man who was killed was reported feeling uncomfortable in a cell. That's when the sheriff's office says 50 year old Ernesto Tavera and 20 year old Brandon Lerma stabbed the man. Tavera and Lerma were both detained as deputies attempted to perform life saving measures on the man. The unnamed victim was taken to a hospital where he was pronounced dead. The victim was serving time for aggravated robbery and an out of county warrant for assault. Investigators believe all three men are members of the Mexican Mafia prison gang. A 41 year old West Texas Sheriff's deputy has died after a crash this weekend. DPS officials say Loving County Deputy Lauren Redman was driving to help another deputy with a call around 430 yesterday afternoon when she collided with a semi tractor trailer truck. She was pronounced dead at the scene. The truck driver was not injured and is not facing charges. The pageant world is mourning a tragic loss this morning. Chelsea Christ, the 2019 winner of the Miss USA pageant, is dead at the age of 30. Police say she jumped from a Manhattan apartment building Sunday morning. Her family confirmed her death in the statement. She won the Miss USA pageant in 2019 and competed in Miss Universe pageant that year. When she was crowned, it marked that for the first time, three African American women were the reigning Miss USA, Miss Teen USA, and Miss America. Metro Health says COVID hospitalizations are slowly decreasing. In their last report, there were 1,245 patients in the hospital, 282 in ICU, 127 on ventilators. Metro Health also confirmed 15 more people have died from COVID. Community Labs is opening a new COVID-19 public testing site this week, and you can expect a quicker turnaround time for results. It's going to be at Divine Providence Catholic Church at 5667 Old Pearsall Road. This opens today through Friday, 8 to 6. Officials with Community Labs say people will get the results in under 48 hours. Appointments are not required. We turn now to Spotify. The platform is making changes after being criticized for COVID-19 misinformation. Now the company's biggest star, podcaster Joe Rogan, is responding. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has a story. This morning, Joe Rogan is responding after rock legend Neil Young yanked his music catalog from Spotify. The multi-Grammy winner was the first to pull his music in protest of Spotify's biggest star, podcaster Joe Rogan, who was accused of spreading misinformation about the COVID vaccine. I don't think that if you're a young, healthy person that you need it. Rogan has an average of 11 million listeners and a reported $100 million contract. Spotify now announcing it will add content advisories to all podcast episodes that discuss the virus. Spotify CEO Daniel Ek not naming Rogan, but saying it is important to me that we don't take on the position of being content censor, while also making sure that there are rules in place and consequences for those who violate. Rogan responding in a lengthy post on Instagram, agreeing with the new advisory and saying he will make changes to his show. If there's anything that I've done that I could do better is uh, have more experts with differing opinions right after I have the controversial ones. This comes after others join Neil Young in his battle over misinformation. Friday, singer Joni Mitchell said she's taking sides, seeking to remove her music from Spotify. And Sunday, Nils Lofgren, the Bruce Springsteen guitarist and member of Crazy Horse, saying we encourage all musicians, artists, and music lovers everywhere to stand with us and cut ties with Spotify. Even Prince Harry and Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, weighing in. The couple signed a multi-year deal to produce and host podcasts for Spotify. Now they're urging the company to tame virus misinformation. Rhiannon and Ali, ABC News, New York. 641, about 57 degrees. Well, important news if you're trying to lose weight after the break, the impact plastic may be having on your body that you may not know about. Topping your morning medical news this morning, new research shows plastic products may be one of the reasons why you're not losing weight. Scientists in Norway say certain chemicals in plastic packaging can get into your body and mess with your metabolism, and that could be leading to weight gain. They found ordinary plastic products contain a mix of substances that could be behind over uh, being overweight and obesity. Some of the things they looked at include food wrappers, water bottles, and kitchen sponges. 
For a long time, researchers believe plastic chemicals stayed in plastic, but more research is showing that is not always the case, and they may leach into our food and our drink. Let's check traffic a quarter till. Here's Stephen. It's busy out there, Mark. Sarah, we take a look right now. Trans guy, this is a big problem off I-10 at Callahan East. We just sent a push alert out. If you have your Twitter uh, or your phone next to you, you want to avoid this area because traffic is moving, but very slowly. Uh, that's because a crash has been picked up right there. You can see first responders working to clear things up. <clears throat> Pardon me, it's still very dark out, so we can't exactly make out the scene, but we are seeing that there is a lot of uh, heavy first responders presence there. Taking you right to the map, I-10 eastbound at Crossroads. You can see that build up there. We're going to jump up over here because we've got a lot to get to. Loop 410 eastbound at 35, where we have a slowdown happening right over there. Lots of red and orange that is building in those eastbound lanes of 410. Unfortunately, those problems don't stop. We can take a jump up over here. We did have a crash off 410, or pardon me, 1604 westbound at Lookout Road, where we saw a big buildup up on those westbound lanes and we still see that when we jump up over here off 1604 eastbound in Nacogdoches Road. Now that crash wasn't causing any slowdowns in those eastbound lanes, so the westbound lanes seem to be the problem right now, but uh, it does look like that crash may have cleared out, but doesn't look like the slowdowns have either. As we jump out, we show you a pretty active map and you can see that we have about four crashes that we're watching and I do want to give a good update here. That crash off of I-10 East at 35 that we showed you earlier has since cleared out, so some progress there, but we're not seeing so much progress here off of I-10 at Callahan East. We're going to watch these roads closely, but Mike, it's definitely a wet day. Boy, not a great way to start off on a Monday. Yeah, we do have uh, wet roads out there, and even though some of the rain may have come to an end, uh, we still have a few more showers in the forecast. Obviously, the roads aren't going to be drying off anytime soon. The majority of rain and even a, uh, well, got another got a lightning strike showing up right there just to the north of Canyon Lake near San Marcos right now, and we will continue to see a few more few more lightning strikes here and there, especially off to the east and to the northeast as the uh, morning rolls on and on into this afternoon. Here in town, we had a better coverage earlier, but here once again, more of these showers are now starting to pop up, so they'll be off and on throughout the rest of the morning and even into this afternoon. Then we'll start to taper off somewhat. And down to the south, got some right around Floresville and also heading up in towards Seguin. The majority of rain is going to be well off to the east, and that's where some of the very very heavy rain that the heavy rain flooding potential is throughout the day. This particular model has a lot of it trying to come to an end here. I think we'll still have a few leftover showers in behind that into about mid afternoon. But again, the majority of everything works its way off to the east later on today. And as far as rainfall totals uh, could see in our extreme eastern counties, maybe two, four inches of rain. The heaviest amounts are going to be well off the east of our area and perhaps about uh, an inch or so here in town. Lesser amounts in probably even nothing further on out there to the west. Well, we'll get a fairly decent amount in portions of the, the recharge zone, which is nice, which we've already been seeing so far this morning. And there's the uh, flood watch in effect up until 9 o'clock. All right, jump ahead to the future. So today night we get the rain and then tomorrow we get the break in the action. Then Wednesday rain comes back into the picture and depending on which computer model. So jury is still out. They are definitely not in agreement as to when the cold air is really going to come on in here and does it meet up with the the moisture in the atmosphere. This one does have as most are in agreement up around Fredericksburg, Austin early on Thursday morning, and it's still in the form of some rain throughout much of the area here in town. Then that cold air will continue to filter on in, so we may see a little bit of changeover, but some of the moisture may be on out of here by that time. So the best window of opportunity is going to be in the morning on Thursday. Wintry mix up to the north and still kind of iffy here in town, but there is that chance obviously. Today, 62 at noon. Showers, a couple of thunderstorms. High temperature today makes it up to 65 with potentially heavy rain off to the east. And then tomorrow, break in the action. Low 70s, mid 70s Wednesday. We'll start to see some showers. Front moves through in the wee hours Thursday morning. And again, just how quickly the cold air and freezing temperatures get down as far south as San Antonio. That's still kind of a wait and see situation. But that light winter, wintry mix and up to the north. Definitely windy on Thursday, colder temperatures, windy on Friday. We're going to see some just brutal wind chills Friday morning. Temperatures in the mid 20s, both Friday and Saturday morning. So we're going to have somewhat of an extended period of time with temperatures below freezing. So yeah, you want to definitely watch it with that as far as uh, pets and pipes and everything. But we're still going to keep watching as far as the, the potential for that wintry mix. Sarah, Mark. Thank you, Mike.
Right now it's about 10 till 57 degrees. All right, Mike just told us about that cold weather that's heading our way tomorrow in GMSA. What you can do to prep your home and car for those colder temperatures. Our Spurs were shorthanded last night, missing DeJounte Murray, Yaka Pirtle, and Derek White. As San Antonio took on the best in the West, the Phoenix Suns on the road. Spurs had a 91-79 lead in the final quarter, but the Suns erased that advantage in less than four minutes. They beat the Spurs 115-110, to a bit of a heartbreaker last night. Up next, Spurs come home tomorrow night, take on the Warriors, tip off 7.30 at the AT&T Center. Then Thursday, the Miami Heat are in town, followed by the Houston Rockets on Friday. And for all your sports highlights, scores, schedules, and more, be sure to watch Instant Replay Sunday nights at 11 right here on KSAT. And check out the Instant Replay tab over on KSAT.com. There's that shot again. You can see the rain on the... Thank you for wiping that for us. You can see all the mess the rain is causing out in the roads out there, so be careful if you're heading out to work or school. Two men's moves on the dance floor have left them both in pain. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say someone shot them for taking all the wrong steps. The police believe jealousy was the motive for the shooting outside El Patio Bar. Police found the two men who both had been grazed by bullets, one on the arm, the other on the head, in the parking lot in the 1000 block of Frio City Road. They say just before two this morning, those victims had gotten into a fight with two other men. Police believe the suspects in this case were jealous because the victims had been dancing with their women. During the fight, they say one of the jealous men pulled out a gun and fired. The two suspects were gone when police arrived. The man who was grazed on the head was taken to a hospital as a precaution. Sarah, Mark? Thank you, Katrina. We're going to check in with Stephen one more time before you head out the road. Busy day on the roadways. Right now, I-10 at Callahan East. We see flashing lights that have been there for over an hour now. Jumping you right to the map, that crash picked up on the eastbound lanes. We're seeing a huge slowdown and also another slowdown happening here on 410 eastbound at East Houston Street, Mike. And we still have some rain around the area, wet roads, and rain is going to continue off and on. Most of it is up to the north and off to the east, and that's where the uh, flood threat is. We do have a flood watch in effect up until 9 o'clock tonight for our extreme eastern counties. It does include San Marcos and we're going to see temperatures getting up into the mid 60s later on today. Then we get a break in the action, then some rain Wednesday and the much, much colder air for the end of the week. I swear I just heard thunder here in the downtown yeah. area. Possibility for it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mike. Have a great day.